In case you miss it, here's a sports animal rewind. We're pleased now to be joined by Mike Bajake in Tennessee's Offensive coordinator. Mike, how are you? Great. How about you? We're doing fantastic. Thank you for joining us. Um, just uh, found out recently that Justin Worley's headed to the Manning Passing Academy. Uh, it'll be a little bit later this month. Uh, that's in Thibodeau, Louisiana. Uh, how do you think this could help Justin? Well, I think it exposes him to the other great quarterbacks in the country. And, and obviously being around uh, guys like that and being around Peyton Manning and, and Eli Manning and, and learning from uh, that experience can only benefit him as as, as, as he steps into uh, this stage. Did you like the progress that you saw in the spring from Justin Worley and Nathan Peterman? They, they both have done a great job since day one. I, I love the approach they take. They're both um, they're, they're, they both aim to please. They both work really hard, both on the field, in the weight room, and, and then also in the classroom. They're, they're, they're both highly intelligent guys, uh, and, and I'm excited about, about what they bring to the table. We had a question from a caller earlier about what could Tennessee coaches do, or, or not just Tennessee coaches, but any coaches, in terms of uh, going to camps for Nike, for Adidas, uh, for rivals, uh, versus uh, having your own camps. What, what can the coaches do, and what are they not allowed to do? We're regard? very limited in how much we can participate in camps. Uh, basically, it boils down to this. We're allowed to coach at camps at our university uh, that are sponsored by our university, and any camp that we run or put on within the state or within 50-mile radius of campus is what the NCAA allows us to to, um, to work with. Uh, camps sponsored by Nike, Adidas, uh, Rivals, Scout, those types of camps are not permitted um, for us to, to attend. Does Butch Jones have an interest in having a camp outside of Knoxville? Has he talked about that? At no, all? we you know we have such a great product here in terms of our stadium, in terms of our facility, that if we're going to run a camp, we want to get the, the campers, the recruits, their families here on campus to see everything that we have to offer. You see a lot of quarterbacks in the National Football League, and you've spent time there as, as an assistant in the NFL. You see them making an impact at an earlier age. Do you think quarterbacks are developing at an earlier age? I think they're being thrown into the fire a lot earlier at the college level. Uh, I think they're, what, what is asked of them from a mental standpoint uh, both at college and, and, and even in the high school. I really think it starts at the high school level. They're, they're, they're in offenses that are so dynamic. Uh, they're throwing the ball around a ton in high school. Uh, it, it, it transfers over into having that experience of being in the pocket, seeing the field, uh, making the accurate throws at the college level, and, and then obviously translates uh, into their performance at the, at the NFL level. So I think it really starts at a young age, e- even before college. What, what coaches are doing at the high school level developing young players is phenomenal. Is that a lot of the spread and, and hurry-up offense that you're seeing uh, in college now? You've seen a lot of that in high school also, right? We are. We are, but I, I think just the experience of throwing the ball around. I, I think uh, the, the passing attack at the high school level has become uh, you know, much more complex than, than maybe it was when, when a long, long time ago when I was in high school. And, and uh, you know, guys are benefiting. Players are benefiting from uh, having the, the, the knowledge of, of how the timing and spacing works and, and having the experience of seeing the field and, and things like that. Mike, there are some quarterbacks in high school that only take snaps from the shotgun. And then when they get to college, at times they have to make an adjustment. Have you seen some of that? I don't think it's a big adjustment to make, uh, whether it's from shotgun to center or vice versa. Mm-hmm. The big thing, like I mentioned earlier, is having that experience of being in a setting where there are guys rushing the passer and you're, you, you have your vision downfield and you're going through progressions and reading defenses. Um, one of the things that I evaluate when I look at quarterbacks high, on, on high school video is how comfortable they are in the pocket, You know how, how much uh, they're able to block out the rush and, and, and how well they adjust to maybe pressures or blitzes and things like that. So I, I think comfort in the pocket and pocket presence and ability to move in the pocket and escape when necessary is important in evaluating those guys. Butch Jones said that he wants to go even faster in the, in the fall than he did in the spring. And since uh, in recent times, Nick Saban at Alabama – and uh, Will Muschamp at Florida have complained about the fast-paced offenses, saying there are safety issues. And then uh, another coach, Brett Bielema, said that he would like to be able to, for the defense to at least call a timeout or, or substitute in the first 15 seconds. Uh, do you like hearing coaches complain about it? <laughs> it's, uh, we, we talk to our players a lot about making conditioning a factor. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if it's a safety issue. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if I've ever heard of uh, a player getting injured because the offense is moving too fast. But we, we want conditioning to be a factor. We want... Uh, we want that element 
uh, to be present when we're talking to our players about playing physically and, and playing with a hard edge and, and playing with a, a tough mentality. So uh, I am glad to hear that that it is not uh, that, that people don't enjoy facing that type of offense. Does it not only help your offense get in better condition, but your defense as well? Absolutely. And it starts, frankly, it starts with our strength coach, Dave Lawson, mm-hmm. who does a great job of preparing our team for that conditioning level. And and I know we, we, it's not just being up-tempo, no huddle is not just a benefit to our offense. It's the We do everything with an up-tempo mentality. And, and, and so it does benefit our, our defense because they're in that much better shape because they're used to practicing at that, at that pace, at that tempo, and, and at that speed. Do you think a fast-paced offense could be a potential equalizer against a very talented defense? I do. I, I, I do. You know, um, in drawing on our experiences in the past, both at, at Cincinnati and at Central Michigan, I feel like we were able to beat some teams that had better talent, uh, when we were at Central Michigan, you know, we, we beat a couple of Big Ten teams. Uh, when, when we were at Cincinnati, frankly, um, you know, we, we beat a couple of teams that that maybe if you just looked at the roster and evaluated the talent, uh, we we might not have uh, you, you might not think we were going to beat them. But our guys, uh, but conditioning was an equalizer, and tempo was an equalizer, and and, and obviously playing with great effort go, falls into that. We want to we want to play from from snap to whistle, and then line up fast from whistle to the next snap. So. We, we want to make all that a factor, and, and the more you give the defense to handle in, in that regard, the better off we will be offensively. Mike, statistically, Tennessee had its worst defense in history last year. So with a fast-paced offense, do you have to be considerate of maybe not putting them in a bad situation or having too many three-and-outs to protect them a little bit? We talk about productivity, and whether you're an up-tempo offense or whether you're a huddle offense, if you're three and out, it's 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 not very good for the defense. So uh, we we talk to our players about, uh, especially our quarterbacks, um, about managing the game, being productive on first and second down, getting into manageable third down uh, situations, and 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 changing the field position. You know, we we don't have to score every series, but we do want to get first downs and keep the and, and possess the ball to a certain degree. So um, as long as you're getting first downs. Whether you're moving fast or not, you're keeping your defense off the field, and, and that's what allows them to, to recover from the, the previous series. What are the biggest challenges in getting your personnel to adjust to that type of pace that you want to operate in? It's it's a constant reinforcement from, from our coaching staff, from the players on the field, about continually playing at that tempo. It doesn't come naturally to players. So starting from day one of this past spring and from day one of this upcoming training camp, I, as the offensive coordinator, will coach more related to tempo, especially in the first few days, than I might with assignment or technique. Now, obviously, I'm not going to ignore assignment and technique, but but our players understanding the importance of tempo is something that, that we will continually reinforce. And I know there will be times in the middle of training camp where I'll feel we're moving slowly. So, again, I'll go back to focusing my attention on, on, uh, on moving with a better tempo and you, you sacrifice here or there. You've got to pick and choose your spots, but um, that is the most important thing for us. How much in the past have you given quarterbacks that could handle it the ability to audible and check the plays, and, and how do you handle that case by case? We give them quite a bit of freedom uh, to, to, to manage the protections, to, to even make the proper checks in the run game. Um, and they, they, you know, we, we've managed that, and, and I feel that, that if you give them a foundation where – they know how to. Pro- they can process the information quickly. Again, I, I think one of the things I look for in a quarterback is their mental ability. Uh, you know, I'm not looking for a, a high school student athlete with a 2.0 GPA and, and, and a 16 ACT. Uh, I, I take a lot, put a lot of stock in how they do academically because I want smart guys that that can manage a football game. So, uh, if if uh, if they've shown the capability to, to to handle that part of the game, I'm going to put put it all on their plate. What about from a mechanic standpoint? You're talking about evaluating earlier. Are are there different kind of certain mechanics that you're more interested in, or how, because there's some quarterbacks that can throw out of tough spots. Not everyone can make those throws, but they're not mechanically sound. Where do you fall on all that? Well, it, it, it's a matter of evaluating the overall prospect. Um, it starts with their ability to make good decisions yeah. and uh, their accuracy, and obviously their athletic ability. Um, it all goes. Evaluating the big picture is important. Um, you want to see them make make throws under duress. You want to see them make uh, accurate throws under duress. You want to see them throw all the different types of passes: the deep ball, the intermediate ball, the short balls. Um, 
use touch when, when they're making those different throws, you know, when they need to zip it in, when they need to take a little bit off. So uh, you can get a lot of that by evaluating video. You can get some of that by evaluating the guys in person, and, and it all goes into, into the evaluation. I guess Mike Bajaki, Tennessee offensive coordinator. Mike, how much of the scheme did you put in in the spring? You know, that, that's an interesting question. We've always, we've always tailored the scheme to the skill set of our players. Mm-hmm. And everywhere we've been, even within those stops, our personnel is constantly changing, so our scheme is constantly changing. Uh, there were plays we ran at Cincinnati that we never installed at Central Michigan. There were plays uh, at Central Michigan that we never even bothered installing at Cincinnati because it didn't fit our personnel. So uh, that's hard to give you a definitive answer, but we, we got we have enough in, in, in the package right now where we could walk out and obviously brush off uh, the rust a little bit here from, from the summer. And, and, and go out and compete. We'll add a little bit more through the course of training camp, but I'm happy with where we ended the spring. What's your opinion of your playmakers on offense? I know you said you needed to identify them. C- consistency right now, is, uh, or at least at the end of spring, was the big issue. Um, we have some guys that can do some really good things. You know, We want guys that can get more than what the play is designed for. You need to be able to break a tackle. You need to be able to make a guy miss. Um, you know, I often <laughs> say, make make me right as a play caller. You know, not not every play call is going to be the perfect scheme against the perfect defense. So, uh, the guys that can that can make a little bit more happen is is uh, you know make the difficult catch. All those things uh, go into our evaluation of our playmakers. But being able to do that on a consistent basis or in those high stress situations uh, is an important part of uh, of figuring out exactly who those guys will be. What has uh, Dave Lawson, the strength and conditioning coach, told you about who has looked good so far in the uh, offseason program? Well, he, he is limited in how much he can evaluate those guys because he's, he's not allowed to be around them with a football in their hands. So uh, his, his evaluation is limited to what they do in the weight room and what they do on the conditioning field. He likes the approach they take on a daily basis. He says they're really busting their butt. They, 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 they work hard. you know. And, 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 again, that's been refreshing since the, the first day I stepped on campus. I love the attitude of our players, and, and they do everything we ask of them. So uh, he said that, that this summer uh, they, they've kind of left off. They started where they left off from, from the spring, and, and they haven't balked at anything he's thrown in their direction. And the differences in, uh, in height, and especially weight, um, it looked like a number of the offensive linemen lost some weight. You're looking to have have those guys still be just as big big and strong, but maybe a little bit more mobile? Um, yes. You know, I, I think agility... It's funny, when I got the Chicago Bears uh, in 2004, Levy Smith challenged the entire program. And when I say that, I mean the players, yes, the coaches, the trainers, the managers, the, the front office. He wanted everybody to lose weight with the idea that speed is essential to this game. And the faster you, you can play, I don't care what position you are, the faster you play, the better off you're going to be in, 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 in football. So uh, we, we've encouraged our our offense linemen in particular to lose weight, uh, and, and they've done a great job. It, it's up to almost across the board. Every one of them has lost double-digit numbers, uh, double-digit pounds, and uh, that that just helps them, you know, move more, move better. And uh, obviously, their conditioning is that much better. You mentioned the Chicago Bears. Certainly, Peyton Manning was a part of that game and going up against them. Talk about that, and what has Peyton said to you about? We, that we we've never discussed it. Uh, actually, <laughs> Coach Jones, when, when the first time I met Peyton. Uh, Said yes that that I was on the staff that that he beat and I told I, I kind of nudged coach I said yeah thanks for bringing that up I've been trying to forget that for the last seven years uh, obviously it was a great opportunity to go to a Super Bowl um, would like for it to have turned out uh, differently uh, it's funny you know you, I grew up watching Peyton we we were in college probably around the same time he's a little bit younger than me um, and I just admired what he did in college what he's done in the NFL and then we face him in the Super Bowl and he beats us so I, I went from being a, a huge Peyton Manning fan. To, to really having a little bit of disgust for him, uh, and then when I got the job, I, you, even before that, you can't, you can't, you have to respect what he does, and, and he's a, a true professional. And, and uh, as much as I didn't want to like him, even even before I got this job, you just you're drawn to him, and and what he's such a, a great player and a great professional that you have to admire him. Lovey Smith is a former Tennessee assistant coach. Did you talk to Lovey about the Tennessee job before you came here? N- never touched base with him about it. Obviously, the the opportunity to come here was was. Um, was just a, a godsend and, and so attractive and, and uh, a great blessing. So we, we, we were ecstatic to be here um, and uh, didn't re- didn't really look for him. Uh, didn't really look for any insight from him because when we when we got here we hit the ground running and it was full speed ahead. So there wasn't a whole lot of time to take a deep breath and uh, pick people's brains. Tennessee has uh, four scholarship quarterbacks. Is that the number you like? Would you like to have five or six? What are your thoughts on that? Uh, ideally, you, you carry five. 
to six on the roster. But five is probably the target number. Um, in, in a perfect world, you're signing one a year, and you have one each each given year. That never works out that way, but you, you'd like to have uh, the depth on your roster and, and the, the competitive situation where guys, guys are competing against uh, multiple players uh, to bring out their best. Um, so so we, we look to carry five on our roster. Mike, when, uh, when, you, when you arrived here, you were in, this was a program that has lost at least seven games three years in a row. Uh, did you experience any of a defeatist attitude among any of the players, or did you find that this was a group that was willing to learn and more ready to buy in because they had not been winning? There, the latter, for sure. The, the, their mentality, they were hungry to win. And, and so that's why I say from the first day that we arrived, when we when we came in, uh, they were willing. We, we could tell them if we wanted to tell them that hey, you need to do a cartwheel to improve. They would do it. You know, they didn't question anything because they wanted to be that much better. And, and um, so so that's the approach they've taken. That's been refreshing. You know, having gone through transitions now for the third time with Coach Jones and and, and a few guys on our staff, uh, you always. You, even at the high school level, college level, NFL, you're always going to get resistance from, from, from different players and things like that. Uh, we've received less resistance here at the University of Tennessee than anywhere else we've ever been. Uh, and I think that is because they're hungry. They want to win, and they're willing to do whatever it takes. Well, and you've got a nice venue in which to play your home games, don't you? That helps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mike, we appreciate it. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, best of luck to you and the football team this season. And I look forward to visiting with you again. Thank you for having me. Thank Thanks you, Mike. So Mike Bajake in Tennessee, offensive coordinator.